Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the DC Collectibles Red Hood. Uh, it's my understanding that this is the new 52 design of the Red Hood. Um, I don't mind the design too much. I kind of like it. I like the kind of armored look here, and then the rest is fairly standard. I'm not a big fan, personally, of the face sculpted into the helmet. I much prefer that rounder one that we are fairly accustomed to. And I don't know what is going on with the Edward Scissor forearms over here. I don't I don't like this at all. And that seems to be a pretty common sentiment. So I don't know where why they came up with that, but I don't like those. But anyway, let's let's not worry about what I like and let's talk about the actual figure because that's what matters. It stands just about six and three quarter inches tall, so even though it's the DC collectibles figure, it's still fairly well in scale with your standard DCUC or Marvel Legend. It might be a little bit tall, but not too bad. Uh, I actually got this from a customer because we're going to be using it for a custom. Uh, how much or how little I end up using, I haven't quite decided yet, but if you want to guess what I'm making using parts from this guy, it shouldn't be too hard, but you guys can go ahead and guess at that. Uh, I'll tell you, it's very, it's going to be very similar to the Nightwing I made. Anyway, let's talk about the review before I ramble on anymore. Head articulation, up and down. That's pretty good. We don't normally get an up and down. Not so much down, but we get to go up like that. Then we have a little bit of rotation here. It's really stiff, but it's there. He kind of wants to lean. I'm thinking the peg's not quite in straight. I think it goes up in an angle, because when I rotate the head it looks up instead of just to the side. So that's something to note. But there's that. Shoulder articulation, oh, it's like a ball hinge, but it has almost no horizontal, <coughs> excuse me, horizontal movement. So that's not so great really. No range of motion there. It does swing out, so that's all right. Then we have the elbow, which 45 degrees maybe. So that's not that good. No bicep swivel at the shoulder. We get the swivel here at the elbow, but the way it's sculpted, it kind of just pops it out a little bit. It doesn't work all that well. There is a swivel here at the forearm where the Edward Scissor hand armband things come in. So I guess that's good. You can put them either down or to the side, depending on how you want to do it, because we also have a wrist swivel. Normally double swivels would be redundant, but since he has this going on, I guess that comes in handy. Uh, then he has the sculpted hands to hold his guns. Sculpts are pretty good on there. Sculpts are actually pretty good everywhere. It looks fine. It's just this articulation's not the best. Uh, as far as paint goes, well, we'll get to paint in a minute. He has no torso articulation at all. He's supposed to have a waist swivel, it looks like, but this one is completely frozen, like not even a little bit budging, so it may not even technically be there. Sure looks like it though, so I don't know. If yours swivels, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below, but this one definitely does not. For the hips, they go out to the side pretty well actually. That's surprising, I was not expecting that, so that's pretty good. And as far as moving them forward, we can get them out almost perfectly straightforward. There is no thigh swivel though, and it does make them rotate a little bit, so when you bend the knee, it's gonna go at an angle. Just a little bit, but a little bit may be enough to be a problem. So that's something to note. And for the knee, we have just the single hinge. Give you about 90 degrees though, so that's not bad. The little knee pad thing is sculpted on. That works pretty well to hide the joint, so that's kind of good. For the ankle articulation, yeah, we have pretty good range of motion going all the way back, going all the way forward. No ankle rocker built in, but the uh, joint that's there is pretty good. So that's it for the articulation. The holsters. Hard plastic here connected by soft plastic to the belt so they don't get in the way of moving the hips around as you saw, so that's kind of nice. He has little straps that don't stay connected anywhere, they just kind of float. So that's a little strange to me. The guns do fit in the holsters though, so that's nice. They could fit better, that's for sure, but they do fit, so that's okay I guess. Uh, the guns themselves, I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like it has a rail going all the way across the top. Maybe that's how it is in the comics. If it's not, that's really odd. I've never seen a gun like that before. But otherwise, it's a nice silver, and they did paint the grip, so that's nice. Uh, the paint on the figure, there is a little bit of paint work on the feet, so that's good. No shading. I don't think they're shading throughout the pants. It might. 
Well, I can't tell if it's shading or just the light bouncing off of the paint that's there, so it's hard to say. But we do have the painted belt buckle, and we have the painted bat symbol and the zipper. We have the blades painted here, and then the head is painted with kind of like a metallic glossy red with the eyes black and white. So it's a pretty cool looking figure. It's not my favorite look for Red Hood, and the figure's articulation is fairly limited. So I'm going to say... If you're really looking for a Red Hood figure that's about this size, this is pretty much the only one you can find at retail, so go ahead and get it. It's not bad, but it definitely could be better in the range of motion department. And if these things weren't on there, that would make the figure a whole lot better too. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.